this um, uh, my presentation. And, um, and there are two things that I want to uh, say. That I'm really glad that we have so many uh, American colleagues here because for us Europeans uh, trying to make sense uh, and understand all the divisions uh, within American Christianity and within American churches, it, sometimes it's a challenge. So I'm really counting on um, some tips um, and uh, corrections. Uh, also, please excuse my computer because for some reason he didn't want to accept the fact that I was trying to write in English and it kept correcting me into Polish. So I don't know how about the spelling. But um, regardless of all those technical issues, let me try to uh, speak a little bit about the black evangelicals. And I'm trying to differentiate a little bit more uh, uh, within the um, what's called evangelicalism, especially uh, uh, black evangelicalism. And again, for our American guests, it's probably uh, certain things that I want to say here are quite obvious, um, which are not so obvious for Europeans who don't uh, really follow uh, all the development of um, certain religions in the US. But I, I will just start shortly with just saying that evangelicalism as a movement, as I understand it, um, and that's why I also capitalize it, because um, I understand it as this movement that was created in the 18th uh, century through the awakenings. Uh, so this special kind of um, uh, Christian sp uh, spirituality that stresses the new birth uh, and personal uh, relations um, relationship with, 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 with Jesus. And these were um, actually those elements that convinced uh, uh, um, black uh, people in America, the slaves, uh, the enslaved people back then, to actually accept uh, Christianity, because before this uh, old form, traditional form of Christianity was not very convincing, especially that it was used to justify um, slavery. And evangelicalism gave them this uh, more uh, vivid kind of um, spirituality, and also they connected it with elements of their own spirituality brought uh, from uh, Africa. And certain elements in theology were also very uh, important, especially uh, this um, communication with the uh, Holy Spirit. In general, however, now, uh, although this term is used exchangeably with fundamentalism, uh, I would try to distinguish between fundamentalists and uh, evangelicals, conservative evangelicals and progressive evangelicals, because I think those distinctions actually matter in, in in the African American case. I, I actually think this evangelical is not only because of the style of worship, which is very different, but also because of um, political um, focus uh, and social focus is a bit different from, uh, from um, the white, white, white evangelicalism. So as I said, evangelicalism was always connected to um, black churches. Actually, uh, it helped create the denominations, new denominations and, and congregations because it allowed more freedom in uh, who was preaching. However, uh, quite soon there were some differences between the North and, and, and the South. So in the South, the style of worship remained uh, uh, much more emotional uh, than in the North. Uh, however, uh, theological differences started uh, a, a, bit, uh, a bit later. And uh, of course, the split in, in fundamentalist and modernist co uh, controversy or concerned especially uh, white churches. And, and I, I, I put even uh, on this slide, I put fundamentalist uh, in quotation marks because it's difficult to speak about black fundamentalism. Of course, theologically it is possible, but when we take into consideration the fact that many fundamentalists, white fundamentalists were also racist, it is quite difficult politically to kind of use this term. Although of course, uh, theologically we could, we could argue there were also black uh, fundamentalist, fundamentalist uh, sect. sect. However, this, uh, this, this uh, division did influence uh, African churches, and uh, especially that they created uh, a totally new church, Pentecostalism, uh, and we have to appreciate their influence uh, in creating this particular religious movement, which is sometimes forgotten by some uh, white uh, Pentecostals, that it was mostly the influence of the uh, African uh, Americans. Um, and now, we, we, after the, those splits, I don't think that 
So in, in, in white churches, very soon, uh, those that are now called mainline, they actually accepted this uh, liberal theology. So they um, kind of uh, make an agreement with the new scientific um, explorations and, and started uh, considering a human being in more ethical and, and Christianity in more ethical uh, uh, ways. However, in, in black uh, churches, I, I really uh, wouldn't say that um, those, uh, uh, they suddenly after this split became liberal. Uh, however, uh, before uh, social gospel was accepted also by white evangelicals. After this split, white evangelicals, uh, those conservative evangelicals, went away from, from social gospel. And um, that was also the case, um, but not to the same degree, I think, with black churches. Because uh, black churches were never, uh, ne were never able to be as involved socially and politically as white churches because of racism and, and systemic um, uh, development. Um, but they were engaged uh, socially, in, at least in their communities. And also uh, this theology, um, the newborn experience, uh, I think it lasted much longer, just that, um, and, and it actually still lasts in a lot of, a lot of uh, churches. So liberal, but liberal theology in the end was accepted by some black churches, which we now call the historic, some of the historic black churches, but not all. Uh, and that's why I have some problems with classifications that appear in, in different statistics. And this is another question and, and um, a favor that I have to ask uh, to my American uh, colleagues to uh, maybe um, help me with uh, how to search for more uh, accurate statistics. Um, so, but coming back to the black churches, of course, they, they, they split into different denominations. And now it's very difficult to say which of them with time uh, actually uh, drifted away from evangelicalism and which they, it's easy to say it uh, about the uh, church uh, of God in Christ. This is a Pentecostal church and this is very much uh, evangelical still. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, the part of, of, of theology. But other uh, black churches um, got divided, and some some of them uh, have adhere, still adhere to this um, uh, evangelical uh, theology, the new uh, born experience, uh, and some and some uh, stress not only social gospel but also this progressive or liberal um, uh, theology. So those divisions are really difficult and. Um, the problem with the statistics is, as, as we can see here, for example, in Pew Forum, that they show uh, that only 14% uh, uh, of Blacks are uh, evangelical Protestants, which um, probably is, uh, the discount is because they count the um, Black uh, evangelicals that belong to white evangelical churches. And then the second category is the historically Black churches, or black Protestants. Um, but the, the problem is that some of those historically black Protestants are also still evangelical. Not all of them are progressive. Actually, the minority of them are, uh, are, are progressive. So those statistics are, uh, for me, are, uh, it's a problem because I, I can never get as accurate information as I would like to. There are, of course, some, uh, some statistics that uh, include those divisions into evangelicals. So for example, here we can see that um, uh, among African-Americans, the 75% are Christians and seven, uh, 67 Protestants and 42 are evangelicals. So you can see that it's impossible that uh, these are only evangelicals belonging to white evangelical churches. There might, must be some evangelicals belonging to the historically black churches, which, which is quite obvious, but usually not, uh, not um, stressed in, in, in the statistics. Um, so I, um, I would say that uh, it, I think more than half of the black Protestants are actually uh, evangelical. Whether this is a conservative evangelicalism or more progressive, that's another question. Uh, another uh, chart it just shows that uh, less and less people, younger people, don't necessarily go to historically black, black churches, but the older generation still go, goes to those historically 
um, black churches. Now, uh, an interesting thing uh, in politics right now, uh, so we're going straight to the topic, is that, um, well, among conservative white evangelicals, of course, most of them vote uh, Republican. Uh, in case of black Protestants in general, uh, the, of course, they, 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 they vote Democratic. But if we consider that there are so many of them are evangelical, then we can see that also evangelical black Protestants vote uh, democratic. So this division into conservative theology does not have uh, exactly the same influence as it has on, on white churches. And of course, uh, everybody who knows uh, the history of race relations in uh, America understands uh, why it is uh, the case. Um, this chart also shows that those Black um, Christians who belong to uh, predominantly white churches, so we have to remember that there are some Black uh, people who go to historically Black churches or um, Black denominations that belong to predominantly white um, churches. So apparently those who go to predominantly uh, white churches, they're more uh, eager to vote uh, Republican. But in general, uh, all um, African Americans and all African American Christians, including evangelicals, vote um, Democratic. Uh, in 2020, uh, Black evangelicals, at least 62% of them supported uh, Democrats. Um, and you, you can see here uh, that uh, this, this uh, percentage is quite different from, from um, the white, white evangelicals. Um, and also only 8% of black evangelicals uh, identifies as Republican, despite the fact that they have quite a conservative theology that um, translates into the stress on moral or religious um, issues um, that are uh, now um, quite controversial in American politics. However, this, those race relations are still more important than um, in terms of party politics and, and theological divisions. And this, is, um, and this is a chart from 2014, and you can see that uh, Black evangelicals were uh, here were counted as 73 voting for, for, for Democrats. What's interesting here, this is an old statistics, but it shows a very interesting um, trend that although they vote um, democratic, they, they think of their ideology as conservative. So of course it, it, it is conservative, but more in uh, social um, terms or moral issues, uh, uh, not necessarily uh, concerning um, how they consider the government or economic uh, politics. So the bigger, bigger government that in America, that means to be a liberal if you support bigger government. So in this sense, black evangelicals are more liberal than uh, conservative. However, in those moral issues, they are more uh, conservative. So, so it's really difficult to classify them. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, there is, um, it is clear that they are liberal on economic uh, issues uh, and of course racial equality, um, social justice, th th those, those kind of issues, uh, big government, however conservative on religious, uh, on religious issues. Uh, and those religious issues include, for example, <laughs> women's rights, uh, that means uh, also abortion, same-sex marriage, and uh, LGBTQ issues, especially uh, now. Um, and that's also interesting because those, um, uh, th those elements uh, actually influence um, how they uh, perceive the Black Lives uh, Matter. And then the question was, what is more important, race uh, and, and social struggle for uh, justice uh, in the form of Black Lives Matter? Or are those moral issues more important for Black conservative uh, evangelicals? And again, the answer is not that clear. Uh, it, it, again, it depends. Um, so um, let me just... Um, form a thought <laughs> after, uh, after or a, uh, maybe hypothesis. Uh, and I, I will be grateful for, for, for comments uh, from my American uh, colleagues. Because when we think 
about political behavior of black evangelicals. They remind a little bit of the 19th century pre-fundamentalist uh, white evangelicals. And I'm not talking about black evangelicals because they couldn't be very, very socially engaged, but this pre-fundamentalist white evangelicalism, it accepted social gospel and it, it accepted some a form of social engagement, just like the uh, African-American churches were engaged in just that on the local scale. So I, I, I would consider this black evangelicalism as a mix of this 19th century pre-fundamentalist uh, evan white evangelicals evangelicalism connected with what is now being formed as the progressive um, evangelicalism. So for example, Jim Wallace, who is actually stressing quite similarly to, to black uh, evangelicals that um, certain social issues uh, are important and you don't have to give up certain moral things in order to be more socially uh, uh, engaged. Of course, this is a bit of a simplification, but um, that's, that's, my, that's my question to uh, our um, American um, uh, colleagues. Um, and we have to stress that there are also black evangelicals. And, and this, this, this kind that I just described, I think these are these black evangelicals that are, that are actually a part of black churches, of historically black churches. Um, uh, if they belong to white, uh, predominantly white evangelical churches, they're more conservative and less uh, progressive. Um, also, if they belong to mega churches, they, they, they become more conservative all, also in those um, social uh, uh, issues. And those mega churches can be both white or black. Uh, but still, it seems that mega churches in general, uh, because they usually or quite often accept the prosperity gospel, they go into the direction of a more conservative uh, evangelicalism. So that, that's how I would divide um, black uh, evangelicals. And I think this division is important in terms of assessing their um, involvement in a Black Lives Matter movement. Because if we look at how it diversified, uh, diversifies, those uh, who belong to the black churches uh, are more eager to support Black Lives uh, Matter than those uh, that belong to, um, to, to, to white churches or more conservative churches. Uh, and this is just an example, this, this preacher uh, uh, died already, but he was a perfect example of this connecting of this um, conservative uh, evangelical um, theology with prosperity gospel and with all those conservative moral issues that uh, also prevented some black evangelicals uh, to engage uh, much in certain you know, social, so, social issues. Um, and now uh, I, I, I would like to, uh, apart from statistics and apart from trying to categorize, which is my obsession a little bit, because I, I always want to put certain things into certain drawers and it doesn't always work. But um, now I would like to look a little bit more um, on um, qualitative, um, analysis of uh, certain uh, arguments uh, that Black evangelicals present uh, in terms of abortion and all those moral issues. Because although they're evangelicals, and although sometimes they belong to those white evangelical churches, which are also very much anti-abortion and uh, you know, an anti-LGBT issues and uh, many other um, moral issues, uh, they present a little bit different uh, arguments. And that's, that's what's interesting for me because for black evangelicals, not only theological arguments are important in terms of those moral issues, but they also translate it into race, um, race uh, related uh, arguments. So when, when we look uh, at uh, how uh, statistics look in terms of supporting abortion, we can see that quite a lot of evangelical Protestants are uh, against. However, it's not such a huge percentage and also it's changes. This, this statistic doesn't show uh, only evangelicals, but in general, black uh, Americans uh, started to support uh, abortion more 
uh, than before, although this polarization that also Daniel was talking about is bigger and bigger and, and stronger and stronger, but for some reason, you know, those trends are going this way. And also from this uh, chart, you can see that in fact, not so many African Americans are against abortion. On the other hand, the uh, African American evangelical pastors stress this issue very much. It's very important uh, for them. Um, and now we can distinguish between those progressive black uh, pastors. So uh, as I mentioned, those historical black denominations kind of divided and some of uh, the churches uh, accepted in the end uh, this uh, liberal uh, theology or progressive um, attitude. So when we talk about abortion today, there are several um, famous pastors that we know that, that, that are pro-abortion or maybe not pro-abortion, but pro-choice. Uh, and of course, the young generation of progressive pastors uh, also um, present themselves as uh, pro-choice. Of course, Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson are very con uh, controversial. And Jesse Jackson didn't used to be uh, in favor of, uh, of pro-choice. Uh, but he changed uh, his position. But in general, we can we can divide um, those pastors uh, in those categories that uh, white uh, even, uh, Christians also can be divided to. So progressive Christians um, who are okay with the pro-choice and uh, evangelicals who are generally um, against. Uh, but it, it's again, it, it concerns more of pastors than uh, general um, population of uh, evangelicals. Um, and also argumentation is different than I, as I mentioned. And what's interesting, both, um, uh, and now I'm talking only about evangelicals. I don't want, I'm, I'm leaving the progressive, uh, progressive uh, Christians, uh, uh, African-American Christians behind. And I'm just talking about black evangelicals. And both black evangelicals who are anti-abortion and pro-choice, they both sides actually use both religious arguments and racial arguments. And this, this is something interesting for me because, um, well, this is something unusual uh, when you consider the different cultural um, composition of our countries. So for example, Alveda uh, Celeste King, who is a niece of uh, Martin Luther King, uh, she did have some abortions, uh, several actually, but then she turned to be very much anti-abortion. Uh, she is an activist uh, right now. She also became very conservative. She supported Donald Trump in the last uh, elections. Uh, but that's not the thing that I want to focus on. I want to focus on her argumentation. She uh, considers abortions as a racial, a racial problem. It's a womb lynching, as she says. She says that the Planned Parenthood, and of course, not only, that's, this is not only her opinion, but she's a, an example of this uh, way of thinking. So, so th there, are, there, there is this group of evangelicals uh, uh, that, that, that consider abortion not only sinful in theological terms, but also um, directed against, uh, against black people in America. And that's interesting because usually those, those people who are against abortion, now they don't support Black Lives Matter. Uh, however, for them, they are actually fighting for uh, racial issues, but just in a different form. They, 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 they protect the unborn life of uh, black, black children. So she, 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 she organized several uh, actions and, and they signed several uh, proclamations and, and petitions. And as you can, I, as you can read here, uh, she, she uh, very directly says that uh, abortion is disproportionately harmful to black mothers and their babies. Um, this is another example. However, this is quite a different example because this time it's quite unusual. This, um, evangelical um, uh, pastor. She's um, both anti-abortion and pro-Black uh, Lives Matter. Uh, so she connects, and, and, it, and I got interested in how she connects those issues. So she says that in general that she can see, and, and what's interesting, she's uh, cooperating with Focus on the Family. So this is a very conservative uh, entity connected to the religious right. 
uh, and the religious right, and let's point it at, at, at this moment that white evangelicals are the group that does not support uh, Black Lives Matter. This is the least supportive group, group of Black Lives Matter. And of course, Pat Robertson ma made several uh, you know, comments about uh, and other, other representatives of the religious right, of course, uh, are very uh, vocal about their opposition to Black Lives Matter. So this lady, she cooperates with focus on the family and still she supports Black Lives Matter uh, uh, matter because she thinks that those issues are connected, that white people don't care uh, neither about uh, living Black people nor about people who are yet to be uh, born. Uh, so she says, we have uh, we have to build a society that does not, uh, I mean, we, we have built, we, we, we've already built a society that does not value life. Uh, and now we have to build a society in which a woman is not going to have to have uh, an abortion because that's not really a choice that she, uh, that, that she has. So she connects those systemic inequalities uh, uh, with the fact that uh, black, um, and this is true, this is true. The statistics show that black women have more statistically more abortions than, than white women. And she uh, correctly uh, connected to worse um, conditions in, in which black women live. So she says, we have to take care of black lives. So black lives matter now when they're adult, but in order uh, for the ladies not to have to abort uh, their children. And also she says uh, that for the government, it's cheaper uh, to perform abortions than to help black uh, people. Um, and again, you know, this is a very uh, uh, interesting way of argumentation, but very reasonable. Uh, so um, so this, is, this is this another example of applying both racial and theological arguments to those moral issues that are now at stake in American um, politics. Another, another pastor, um, who says he is pro-life, he, um, he doesn't want to be very strict about it because he sees the disparities that happen in black communities. And what's interesting here, what he says, he doesn't want white legislators legislating what black women should do with their bodies. So again, this is this, is, this, is this racial dimension of, uh, of a moral issue which, uh, which abortion boils down to. So the disparities um, among you know, racial communities are important here. Again, this, um, this position would be more characteristic for progressive Christians because progressive Christians don't really have uh, so much uh, trouble with, with abortion. But this uh, person, she is very much engaged in the evangelical community and yet she supports a uh, pro-choice uh, stand. And she says that actually uh, she thinks it's a godly position and God empowers her to help women uh, with you know, having access to uh, abortions. And this is a totally unusual case. And this pastor is quite famous. She became famous in 2016 when she first uh, advocated among uh, evangelicals, both white and black for Black Lives Matter. And she said, you know, it's wrong that you are focusing only on, on um, um, okay, I know that my time is running up because I, I set my clock. Yes, uh, so I'm, I'm going to finish soon. So she, she was the first one to say, you take care of unborn children more than about the lives and why don't you support Black Lives Matter? And she was the one that was advocating among evangelicals, both white and black, to actually support Black Lives uh, Matter movement. And she says, there's no doubt that uh, the, the reproductive rights are a part of uh, God's right. Now, another, uh, that, that's also, this is just example. You can see that um, black evangelicals are also generally very much anti-same-sex uh, marriage. And what's interesting, this is just one example. Uh, again, uh, racial um, arguments are also used in case of uh, same-sex marriage. Uh, for example, Alveda King says it's a genocide because, you know, out of that kind of relationships, there are not going to be any more Black uh, children. 
And now I want to go to the final point, that means the Black Lives Matter that connects all those problems. So the moral issues with the progressive uh, issues and gender issues, I've actually uh, almost all of the uh, contemporary social problems are connected uh, in the agenda of uh, Black Lives uh, Matter movement. So because these are female leaders and the, the, the movement is decentralized and a lot of them are actually themselves LGBTQ, they stress that the black community uh, always disregarded minorities. So that was like a second level of discrimination. So white men, uh, black men were discriminated by white, white people, but the black men were discriminating other people in their own community. So the part patriarchy is uh, is uh, criticized and um, disregard for all of those minority uh, are, st are stressed in the Black Lives Matter. They say all Black Lives Matter, not only the, you know, um, pastors or men, you know, who have authority. So since the very beginning, the Black Lives Matter movement had support from progressive Black Christians. Not all, not at the very beginning, because that was a shock. And some of them actually said that the movement lacks respectability and lacks loving attitude. Uh, but these were actually the same arguments that Martin Luther King faced when he was uh, fighting, but that, that's just, um, you know, just um, mentioned. But generally, all those people uh, in the end uh, supported the, the movement actually quite early on. In the beginning, some of the Black Lives Matter activists did not want to get support from Al Sharpton, for example, because he was too controversial and considered uh, as a, a person who's profiting on, on some of the issues and actually not really understanding the new generation. But in general, progressive Christians quite soon supported uh, the movement. Evangelicals, black evangelicals, I'm not talking about white evangelicals because white evangelicals until now are very much against black life better movement, but black evangelicals in the beginning were very skeptical. However, with time, 2016 elections, you know, white supremacy things, more and more uh, killings of black people, Black evangelicals started shifting into supporting Black Lives Matter. But now we can see two uh, groups um, um, among uh, Black evangelicals. Uh, and I would say almost none, I think just Michelle Higgins and, and a group around her is an exception that supports Black Lives Matter without any, um, you know, um, additional, you know, thoughts or mm, mm, um, controversies. Uh, the rest of the evangelicals uh, actually uh, offer partial support. And this is the biggest group of evangelicals, of Black evangelicals uh, concerning Black Lives Matter. It's a conditional support, it's partial support. But still there's 20% of Black evangelicals, I'm not talking about white, I'm just talking about Black evangelicals, that, does not, that do not support Black Lives uh, Matter. Um, so because they, of course, they don't support it because of those moral issues, the liberal progressive agenda. Um, they think it does not represent uh, the gospel. Uh, and they kind of divided um, the idea into the concept and the organization. So they stopped supporting organization, but they decided they, just to, to support the concept. So in general, now, of course, black evangelicals are much more eager to support the movement than white evangelicals. Uh, also other issues connected with, 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 with the movement. Uh, however, those people who are supporting, <laughs> another five minutes, uh, those uh, people who are supporting the movement, usually this is this partial support. This is this partial support, like uh, this uh, person here, and also T.D. Jakes, who is a prosperity gospel, and he's very vocal about supporting Black Lives Matter, but he always says, but I don't support same-sex same marriage, and I don't support the organization that supports all those, you know, minorities. I just support uh, the concept. This is another example of a pastor uh, who grants this conditional support, and he actually accuses uh, Black Lives Matter of being demonic and satanical. Uh, because, uh, the, not the concept, but the organization, because he says uh, they do everything to destroy black families and they do everything to be unbiblical. Another very um, famous critic of the movement is Pastor Jackson, who actually called BLM uh, cultural virus, um, Marxist, uh, all the things that you can connect with, um, with um, 
uh, anti-socialist and theological arguments. Another person, she uses mainly theological arguments. She says, Jesus matters, not people. The Black Lives Matter people are using uh, the concept, abusing the concept. Uh, it should be Jesus that connects us uh, and we shouldn't be dividing uh, in terms of color. And this person is the most interesting, I think, because he's the stronger opponent among um, Black evangelical activists against Black Lives Matter movement. And he uses all those theological and political and mar you know, anti-Marxist, anti-socialist, anti-capitalist arguments. But what's interesting, he also uses this uh, racial uh, argumentation. He says, black children are targeted by abortionists. So if we support Black Lives Matter, who, who su supports uh, women's rights, that means abortions. That means that we are actually acting against black, uh, black people. And most uh, generally, I just want to conclude that uh, the biggest problem with supporting Black Lives Matter have the, the, the pastors that are connected to the prosperity gospel. And it's not only because the theological, uh, moral, LGBTQ gender issues, but also because of this stress on uh, self-reliance and um, considering lack of success in life as a result of sin uh, and in, not enough uh, personal piety. Uh, not the structural uh, problem. So th these are the conclusions also that McDaniel uh, has made. He thinks that prosperity gospel uh, is very difficult to connect with um, any social, social engagement. And of course we can discuss it because TG Jake shows that in some way it's possible, but in general that's the... Uh...